And aside from missing a gnarly barrel, getting attacked by a shark is every surfer's worst nightmare. But now, new Aussie-led research has found a bright solution that could prevent hungry great whites from ever biting a beachgoer again. Shark thwarting scientists from Sydney's Macquarie University have come up with an ingenious way to make surfers look practically invisible to great white sharks. You see, great whites have terribly ordinary eyesight and are thought to attack humans after mistaking them as fish-shaped food. So rather than send all the world's sharks to spec savers, researchers have come up with a much better way to deal with the issue. White sharks, they're colourblind and they also don't see as much detail as us. The study really started out to try and understand what visual cues the sharks are using and testing this idea of mistaken identity. Using seal-shaped decoys towed behind a boat, the researchers found that horizontally striped LED lights prevented great whites from rising up and attacking. What happens when you're towing these decoys without lighting is you see the white sharks do these pretty impressive breaches. Yeah! Then when we put the lights on the board, depending on the brightness and the orientation of stripes, we're actually able to prevent that behaviour from occurring. And it actually works. We strapped Christmas lights to Sam in the <laughs> office today and not one shark nor work colleague came near him. All right. Big news day, huh, mate? Sure you're happy you're in here. <laughs> I guess anything that can help deter sharks and keep us safe in the water is worth exploring. I definitely like the idea of doing something that keeps sharks away without causing harm to the sharks. I'd, I'd buy one in a heartbeat. I think I would just take my chances. The next step is to get it onto real life surfboards. Oh, and to find out whether other species like bull and tiger sharks are also blinded by the light. We are trying to move forward with prototypes for surfers. So, fingers crossed, it becomes a new whiz bang, non invasive way to prevent horrifying shark attacks. It sounds way better than drum lines, shark nets, or this underwater flamethrower I designed that does not work. I'm all for giving it a go. Love to feel more safe in the ocean. I think that's a great idea. I'm just not sure <laughs> that I want to be the guinea pig to test that out. Drinks on Friday, what are we doing? My shout. These things really work. <laughs> It's not the light, Sam. <laughs> uh, in 2016, Brett uh, Canellan lost three quarters of his left quad muscle after being attacked by a great white shark in the waters off the New South Wales coast. He's with us now. Brett, despite what you went through, you still surf. Would you give one of these LED prototype boards a go? Yeah, I, I do still surf uh, today and a big part of me getting back in the water is coming to terms with the risks that you have to undertake in order to, to be out there in an environment that I love and anything that can allow me to do that in a way that I feel comfortable I think is, is always a positive. So I think it is a, a great thing to look into. It took you about five months to get back into the water. Would a board like this help you get back into the water sooner? I, I got back into the water the first day I was allowed to get back in oh. the water. And a big reason for that is surfing has always, yeah, for, for me, surfing has always been such a big part of my life. And I guess the love that I have for the sport overshadowed the fear that I had at the time around sharks, especially after everything that had happened to me. But along with that, uh, to get back in the water, another thing that really helped me was learning about sharks, uh, learning about their behaviours, mm. learning about some of the conditions that may have led to my attack. And, and a big part of that education was all about being comfortable in the water. What do you think from the shark's perspective, what do you think happened? Was it a case of mistaken identity? How do you think that unfolded? Yeah, uh, the best way to put it, I think it was just a shark being a shark at the end of the day. Yeah. And uh, as you know, I was in a, a position that you have to be very unlucky to be in, uh, to, to be a part of that mistaken identity, which is something that I, I do believe is, is definitely part of a lot of these interactions. But as far as the, the shark's behaviour goes, I don't think it's something that, you know, everyone has this these grand ideas around how sharks behave, which is largely driven by jaws. And I think a lot of people see them as these evil creatures because of that. And I think when you look past that and you go a layer deeper and you do start to, to learn about them a little bit more, you, you realise they are a lot different to that. Brett, do you think it's going to stick for punters? Like, do you think surfers and swimmers are going to consider using this technology? I think that's the big question here because surfers are notoriously picky when it comes to the, the crafts that they ride. There's, you know, there's a, there's a reason why surfers have been riding the same type of surfboards since, you know, the 70s and 80s. It hasn't really evolved all that much. And 
I think being able to introduce this to the masses when it comes to surfing is, to me, probably the biggest hurdle that a technology like this has to overcome. But that being said, surfing itself is becoming more and more popular as a sport. So I don't think we need to cater to the highest of performance anymore. I think making it inclusive for a lot of people to be able to get out there and to feel comfortable and safe, if this can help them do that, then I'm, I'm all for it. Good on you, Brett. Thanks for your time. Thanks so much, everyone. What do you think? I think it's so cool. First of all, that Brett has gone through something that's obviously an incredibly traumatic experience. Shit. I mean, that's the worst case scenario when you're in the ocean. But he doesn't hate on the sharks, you know. They you, never do. And which, yeah, which is, yeah, I'll, I've got a, quite a few mates that have had similar incidents, and, and, and it's the same sort of thing, you know. And and it's it's great to see that we're trying to remove that stigma and that misunderstanding that yeah. sharks are out to get you. Um, and it's interesting, I've done night diving with sharks, mm. with a light, That's with so reef scary. sharks, and, and it has attracted them. You know, they'll actually spot that light and they'll come in and kind of kind of just bounce off your chest a little bit. What? Very sorry, sorry, wait, 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 wait. what? Well, they just sort of come and have a look and then you, you kind of just guide them away. It's very passive. You guide the but shark away? Yeah, you kind of just get them by the nose and you just go, nope, go down. You kind of just give them a little boop. We you don't know? need the lights then. We but, just get them. Well, <laughs> you boop them on the nose yeah. to get them away. You, like, encourage them. Like, okay. go away, mate, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it works. But uh, so I'd be interested to see how it works with different species. Yeah. But obviously it's different if it's a continuous light, if it's strobing, if it's striped. Lights and sharks, it's a very interesting mm. mix. Yes. And it's cool if it works, if it helps people get out into the ocean, you know, we get more surfers out there feeling comfortable, then it's great. I'm with you. Yeah. Oh, you can never be too safe. That's why my Christmas lights are already up. I'm worried about sharks. <laughs> I've got to call it. There you go.